we are going to play with probably one of my favorite apps in the shooting world, the High Power Wind Lab. Now you can see it's this little white flag right here. Um, I'll just move it over here so you guys can see it easier. But uh, let's get into it. I'm going to show you how this works. And here we are inside of the High Power Wind Lab. Now I'm super excited. I've used this app before. Um, there was an iteration of it about a year and a half ago uh, that he had created and then um, kind of stopped supporting it for just a short period of time. But he has now completely redeveloped it. And I will tell you, it is probably the most featured packed, um, accurate wind modeling system that you can use. And, and I'm gonna go through all of the steps of it. So uh, he is, uh, you know, just to kind of preface, he is an active high power shooter. Uh, his name is Ben. He shoots out of the Reno area. Uh, he's a great shooter. He understands what this app needed to do as a uh, active participant in the sports. And he's just crazy intelligent with, you know, developing apps and he does software for a living. And so I was super excited when he was bringing this project back. And I just really, you know, once he told me it was coming back and he was going to be redeveloping and I got on his beta program, we, we worked together and, and with a couple other people and, you know, really got this thing tweaked even better than it used to be. And I just, it was one of those things where I knew I had to share it once it was ready to go. So it just got re-released on the app store. Uh, for those with Android, he is working on an Android system. I don't think it's going to be too long before it's out there, but I do apologize. This is strictly for Apple people right now. Uh, but keep an eye out and and I will do my best uh, to update in the description uh, or a pinned message that uh, that there is a Google version available or an Android version available. Uh, but as of right now, uh, it is Apple only. So uh, what do we have here? Well, this is your initial interface. And I know it looks pretty simple, but it gives you all the tools that you need. Now, if I had saved files, I could open them. If I wanted to start over, I just hit new. Uh, I don't have to name the session unless I plan on saving it. So if I'm just sitting at the range and I'm just trying to get an idea of what kind of my bracketing is going to be, um, I may not actually name it or anything. Uh, my target is very important, though. So we have LR, which is going to be your high power sling type target for eight, nine and a thousand. We have the LRFC, which is the F class eight, nine and thousand. And then we have the MR1, which is the high power sling. Uh, uh, 600 yard target and then the MR1 FC, which is going to be the F class 600 yard target. So for the purposes of this, we're going to choose the thousand yard F class. That's going to auto automatically make it a thousand. Now you can see if I change it to MR1 FC, it's going to do that. Um, and then uh, and then I can choose the distance here. Uh, so that's where I would be on that one. So uh, we're going to go back to uh, long range and then we're going, oops. And then we're going to click on thousand yard. And then we need to tell it what load we want. Now, I obviously have a load in here already, but I'm going to show you how you would enter it. So this is just these top four are just for you to enter. Uh, they are not necessary other than just your own benefit uh, as far as having a descriptor for what this load is going to be. And just like in your ballistic calculators, uh, this is going to be a saved file so that anytime you want to come in here and play with it, you can choose this particular load. So I've got my 180 hybrid. I shoot at roughly 200 feet altitude. Uh, this is going to be uh, my speed, and this is my current powder charge on this particular load. Then you need to put in your full value. You can see right here, full value, 10 mile an hour wind drift. And this is going to be out of a ballistic calculator. So let me take you over to Shooter, which is the app that I use, and I'm going to show you where to get this information. In order to get our drift numbers, we need to go into a ballistic calculator. Now I've got a couple on here. Um, there's a, there's quite a few that are out there on the app stores, You know whether you're using Android or, or Apple. Uh, I prefer Shooter personally. I also have Trassel on here, but let's go into Shooter. And, um, oh, it's already got my information, but I would come in here. I'm not gonna do a whole thing on how to use the ballistic calculators. That's, that's on you guys for now. I can go over it on another video, but. In this case, I'm going to choose my 284. I've got my 180 hybrid. All my other data is in here. And I need to choose the wind angle, which is going to be 9 o'clock. Uh, in Shooter, you don't have to do it here. Um, I could actually just hit Calculate. And then over on the right side, I can choose my wind angle. So I just need to make sure that it's 9 o'clock. 
and you need to make sure that it is a 10 mile an hour wind speed. And then we're just gonna move through uh, starting at 1000 and we're gonna get this 5.8 number that's up here on the wind column. And then we're gonna go to 900, 800, and we're only gonna enter data for NRA official distances. So that's gonna be one, two, three, five, six, and then eight, 9,000. That's why there's no um, four or seven uh, that's necessary. So you're just gonna work your way through, just write them down and we're just gonna fill it in. And it, it's really simple. You know, we just go down to 800 here and then it's 4.4 and then we go to, you know, 600 and so on. So now that we have the data, let's go back and let's enter it in. Okay, so you can see now that I have that information, I had written it down and then I entered it in. So now you understand where this 5.6, 544, 4, all of these numbers come from. So now that I have all this data, I would simply hit save. And you can see that I've got my load here. I tap on it and now that is there. If I had multiple loads that I wanted to play with, maybe I've got a, a 180 hybrid, maybe I've got a 190 hybrid, maybe I've got a 300 WISM load, whatever it is, I could enter that in here. Uh, being that I only shoot 284, I'm not going to do anything with it, but, um, you know, you might come in here and put, you know, this might be my 284, um, something like that, so that, you know, I, I would have a note of it if I tapped on this, I'd say, oh, okay, I, I get that. Um, but for me, this is all um, all I need to know. So we're going to choose that. It automatically date stamps it, and then we don't have any recorded shots yet, so there's not going to be anything in this file. You can see it's just empty right here. Uh, then we have things we can turn on and off if we don't want to clutter up our screen or if we don't find that they're necessary. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to obviously leave all of these on. If you want to get a hold of the company, you can either go to the website or send an email. I can tell you he's very much devoted to this project right now. So if you have suggestions, uh, you know, if you are active in any of these sports that, are, that can make use of it and there's something that you think would make this better, by all means, please send him an email. Um, he is a very good guy and understands uh, the needs of the shooter. So if there's something that he's overlooked for your particular discipline, maybe there's something in FPS or whatever, uh, I have no doubt that he would listen to you guys. So uh, now that we have all the data in here, let's go ahead and hit start. And that brings up our target. Now you can see we have our, our directional dial. So this is going to be the direction. Obviously this is uh, pointed in the direction the wind is blowing, okay? So if I put it here, the wind is coming from seven o'clock and going to one o'clock. This would be from three o'clock, go uh, from nine o'clock going to three o'clock. And as it changes, you can see that there's an angle over here. And the other numbers will change once we add some uh, some power to the flags. Down here, we have our wind power. And this is going to be either based on a Kestrel, maybe you have some kind of a wind device so you can enter in what the actual velocity is here. So see this 10.39 under the V? That is going to be the velocity. So if you have a Kestrel and you're like, oh, I know it's blowing at 10 miles an hour, great. You can just bring it right in here and put it at 10 miles an hour. And now you know, or maybe you don't have something like that. All you have are wind flags to go off and you go, well, it's, it's blowing pretty much straight out, uh, but not quite going up or tipping. We're going to put it right in the middle here somewhere. Or, hey, those flags are really tipping. We need to come out to the outside or they're drooping. We're going to put it here. So visually or numerically, you are able to enter this. The EV is going to be your adjusted velocity. So if I have a 10 mile an hour wind on a full value, meaning... If it's blowing perfectly from nine o'clock to three o'clock, that would be a full value wind at 10 miles an hour. However, if we suddenly get a wind change, now you can see that this is the adjusted velocity. So by going to, to one o'clock, we now have cut the velocity in half and we'll cover what that does on target over here. But I just want you to understand the difference between velocity and EV, right? So this is the adjusted velocity. Um, we don't have any any um, manual uh, dial on the gun, uh, and then we have the minutes for what the hold off would be. So that's going to be your direction. This is your power, and then this is going to be a bracketed number down here. So the pink down here equates to the pink up here, and then the blue up here adjusts to the, or adjusts by the pink up here. And you can see there's a lock over here. So right now. I can't manually move this dial. All I can do is look at the adjusted hold down here. 
based on what my direction and my power are. Okay, so let's start off on the simplest thing. This is just going to be if I have a no wind zero and I go out and say, well, I know it's blowing at five miles an hour and I know that it is a full value wind uh, at five miles an hour. So, I mean, we're close enough right there at 4998 and we have a full value wind. You can see here, this is what my hold needs to be or two and three quarters in order to hit the center. Now, what the lack of blue is telling me is that uh, there's basically no bracket on the blue. Like I'm really safe from an angle standpoint because there's virtually no bracket showing, but I have to be really careful about my wind calling because the bracket here is going to um, be a little bit different on, on the hold over here. So if I'm here, which is basically going to be one, two, three, four, five, six rings out, or three minutes on the gun, or just under three minutes on the gun, depends on how you're calling your wind, uh, then I know that with a full value, five mile an hour, that equals three minutes, or just under three minutes uh, on the gun. So now you need to make a decision how you want to use this app. And, and hopefully this doesn't get too confusing, but I'm just going to do this from the perspective of uh, how a sling shooter would probably approach it, and then how an F-class shooter would approach it. Now, a uh, sling shooter is obviously not going to be doing a lot of holding off. So they're not going to go out here and say, well, I'm going to hold six rings left. You know, if you're dialing on um, apertures on an open site, you need to be holding this center. So they're going to be definitely looking at this and going, well, I need to put roughly three minutes on the gun to hit center. And I have a pretty big window that I can miss and still stay in, in the relative center. So that's what this bracket is telling you is that, at this power and then from the left side of this to the right side of this means that that's the left side of this to the right side of this. So as long as I'm in the middle of this wind call, right? So as long as I'm somewhere in the four to six mile an hour wind, I'm gonna be hitting center uh, if I put two and three quarter on the gun and I'm holding center. Now as an F-class shooter, I'm gonna approach it similarly, but a little bit different. So what I want to do is if I go out to the range, what I care about is if I go out and I'm shooting a relay and I go, man, it looks like a full value wind and it's about five miles an hour. Um, what should my initial wind in the gun be? Well, I'm going to look at it and go, well, about two and three quarters. So now I want to turn this lock off. I am going to turn the wind power all the way off. And now I'm going to put two and three quarters on the gun. OK, and then I'm going to relock this. And now I'm going to move this back to five miles an hour. And then you see how I have basically put the windage on my gun. And I now have a center hold, center impact. And then what I want to do is, is let's say I have some time. Maybe I've got five or ten minutes to watch the wind and see what's happening. I want to create a bracket. So let's say that I know it's a full value to a one o'clock. So it's going to be somewhere in this range. And so I'm going to look at this. Well, probably a better example would be um, to look at the flag. So let's look at the flags and just say, well, it's always a full value, but I know that it's going to be somewhere between this let off and this let off. Well, that's great. So um, I am always going to be down here. And there's sort of some ups and downs to how this works. So if I think that five miles an hour is the highest wind value, and then I think it's going to drop off. Well, if you look here, I'm always on the downwind or the, the downwind side of the target, which is not a healthy way to shoot. So what I really want to do is I would then come in and go, well, shoot, you know, I, I think I saw it at the high end, but it looks like it's kind of bracketing between, you know, two miles and five miles an hour. I really need to be on the upwind side of it. Uh, I need to take two minutes off the gun now. So I'm going to readjust. I'm going to bring this back relock it and now you can see if I come up to five miles an hour I'm now having to hold on the upwind side which is where I want to be so now I look at it and I go well if I'm between two and five miles an hour I know that if the flags are really low I'm going to be on a center hold and I know if I'm going to be on the high end of the flags I'm going to be at about a four line hold so this is what I would consider my bracket somewhere in this holding range 
so that if it starts dropping off, okay, great. Uh, I know I need to come back to center. If it starts picking up, I need to move my way out. And this is just a really simple way to use this app. Even if you're sitting at home, right? You might be sitting there going, well, um, I just want to see what the wind does. You know, what if it picks up even more? Well, shoot, you know, now I need to put more wind on the gun in order to come back to center, or I need to come out a little bit more. Um, and so you really get to play with it. Now, if we really want to get complicated, if we're on the low end, so, you know, I've got, if you look here, I've got 1.2 in the gun. So this is going to tell me what's actually in the gun up here. So I've got 1.2 in the gun because I took off some wind. And now what if I have a direction change? Well, okay, with only two mile an hour wind, I'm still pretty safe. You know, I'm, I'm still pretty safe on my calls, but look how I start going downwind real quickly. And then if I miss something over here, I'm suddenly nine or potentially an eight if I'm coming from a tailwind. And so this is where you really just need to train your brain to look at direction and to look at power and how the two play off each other. And, and I'm not going to go into, you know, how to read wind and stuff like that right now, but I'm just going to tell you, this is a very, very powerful tool to sit there and move the direction. You know, this is your, your direction and to move your power and to look at how those relationships affect you. So maybe, maybe we started out the day with a two mile an hour tailwind. Um, I want to readjust and, and be back here. So I've got roughly half a minute in the gun. And and now what if it if, if it picks up to full value? Well, you know, look at this. Not a whole lot of difference. I just need to come out a little bit in order to to hit my center. OK, but then if I go to uh, if I suddenly I'm here and I go to a tailwind, well, now I'm out in the, in the nine ring. So this shows you how treacherous this whole range can be. And it shows you how treacherous this whole range can be. And it really shows you how stable, you know, full value or almost full value windage can be. So again, really powerful. And the way he has designed all of this, it's accurate. And that's really what's most important. You know, what you have on the gun, what your new hold is going to be, you know, what your adjusted velocities are. There is a lot of mathematics behind this, and I certainly don't understand how to do it. But I can tell you that this matches up pretty much 100% to what reality would be if you went out to a match and this is what the flag was doing and then this is what the direction was doing you know this is what your hold needs to be in order to have a center so you know just get familiar with this and understand that when you're in this range look at how much how much danger zone you have you want this measurement to be as small as possible okay so so by understanding where your safe areas to shoot are based on wind or based on direction, like if, if it's blowing all over the place like this, you know, that is super treacherous and you're getting these really crazy windows. Um, and so that's where you might say, well, I really want to wait for it to drop off because then I know I'm a lot safer when it's getting really wild like this. Or, hey, you know, the power is really up and down. Let me see what happens when the direction starts moving around. So find those brackets, find those safe zones so that when you're at the range and you've identified that you want to shoot in this and you want to shoot in this condition, um, maybe that condition never comes back. Maybe the power picks up uh, and it never goes away, but the direction's always safe. Well, OK, I, I feel pretty good that I can be out here um, and know where I'm going. So, I, you know, I don't want to detour from the app too much in terms of, of reading wind and making adjustments, but just understand that this tool is crazy powerful to sit at home with and to really understand now if you really want to mix things up you know i've got a regulation wind flag sitting on a 20-foot pole outside my house and you know i've got a large driveway and i sit there and i'll look at the wind and i watch the power and i watch the direction and i match it up to this app and so i'll say okay uh let me get a fresh read what do i think my hold would be and i go well okay here's the direction and i'll kind of put my hand I'll cover up this right side with my hand and, and I'll say, well, you know, OK, there's my direction and here's my power. I bet you I'm going to be, you know, holding two or three left, you know, and oh, OK, great. There's two or three left. And so it, it really lets you play with stuff in a way that you've never been able to do it before. And this isn't just for F class guys or, or bench rest guys. You know, this is wind reading, right? This is power. This is direction. 
So if you're shooting PRS, if you're hunting, if you're doing anything that requires you to look at power, whether it's by flag or by kestrel, and to look at the wind direction, which again, you can easily get using a kestrel, um, this is going to teach you what you need to do to make your holds. Now, that's the direction, you know, that's going to show you the direction and the power and how to make adjustments. But let me show you something else that's really cool is his ability to give you a shot value um, and to mark where your holds are. So you saw that I just made a hold. So let's say I go, well, I don't really believe this. This is my hold. So I'm going to make a dot here or maybe, maybe I'm going to move it and then I'm going to click on my call button and then I shoot. And then let's say it goes whoop. OK, it goes it goes upwind a little bit and then I mark my shot. OK, great. I go, well, I learned my lesson. I need to come in a little bit and then make my call. And then sure enough, there's my shot. Well, now I can go back if I if I want to go back, I can I can actually look at these shots. OK, so if I look at my particular shots, I can say, well, my first call, um, you know, here it is. My second call here it is. And then I can come back if I want, and I can um, I can go back and, and open it back up. Whoops, I forgot I got to save it. So we're going to save this as new session, and then now I can open up my my new session one, and uh, I can start. And then it's going to go ahead and it's going to number these. So there's hold one, shot one, hold two, shot two, and I can do as many shots as I want. So maybe you want to play with the wind. Maybe you want to make some gutsy calls at the at the range one day. Well, this is a great way to plot everything. So you can come in and plot, you know, okay, well, I'm going to try seeing what happens if I, you know, I'm going to hold out here at the edge of board because I think it really picked up. And, you know, that's my call. And, you know, wow, you know, my shot went way over here. Well, okay, what what was the wind doing and what did I need to do to adjust off of that? So, uh, again, he gives you a ton of tools in here. And I, and I, and I think that's really, really important to understand. Um, you know, as far as the target goes. So um, that's the High Power Wind app in a snapshot. Uh, I hope you find it as valuable as I do. Uh, I'll just go back and touch on these features real quick. So if you don't want to record shots and stuff like that, you can turn that off. If you don't want to see your brackets on a scale or brackets on the target, you can turn that off. If you don't want to see your holdovers, um, if you just want to display your last shot only, you know, you can do a lot of different things in here uh to adjust what your target's going to look like and you know that again i think to ben's credit he's done a lot of thought on this on on where you know where he needs to um you know make the adjustments in the calculations and and all that kind of stuff so anyway if you are looking for something that is going to help teach you the wind help you read the wind uh what to do in your holds uh, this is 100% worth every penny. And look, I am the cheapest guy when it comes to apps. I like I spend money on on a lot of things, and I'm really, really cheap when it comes to app. And I and I think we are all sort of conditioned to have this, you know, freemium or 99 cent app mentality. Uh, there is a lot of time and effort that went into this app. And for what I consider to be, you know, when I go and shoot even 20, 25 rounds, you know, that's 20 bucks worth of ammo. So for less than one, you know, Tuesday night match, I can buy this app and have it 100 percent, no ads, not dealing with any of that garbage. Um, you know, whether it's 10 bucks or 12 bucks or whatever it is, I think it's actually 12 bucks. But for the 12 bucks, it is 100 percent worth uh, the price. And uh, you know, I don't have anything invested in this. I had to pay for my app just like everybody else. Um, yes, I was part of the beta program, but, um, you know, I still had to pay for the app before I was in the beta program. So um, I would 100% pay for this once again. So if you deal with wind when you shoot, I really recommend this app. So if you have questions, hit me up below. If you have suggestions, hit up the app developer. Um, again, he's really good about listening and hope you have a good one. We'll talk later.